we are two weeks away from knowing who will be on the Seattle Kraken. Welcome back. That'll throw everybody off. So uh, we've we've seen we've had a lot of discussions about Seattle and who they might take and who they might not. And I've I've seen a lot of comments here and a lot of comments online, which tells me that it might be a good idea to have a bit of a refresher now as we get set for off season and team protected lists and all of the well, you don't have to worry about that guy conversations because I've seen a lot of that and I've thought, well, you do though because Seattle is going to try to have the best team they can coming out of the expansion draft. And I, I don't think teams should be doing them favors by saying, well, he's not under contract, so have at it. Go ahead, Seattle, have at it. There's some danger to that. So the, the Seattle Kraken must select 30 players. Uh, the only team that's exempt is Vegas. And I know people are upset about it, but let's be honest. What was it that knocked Vegas out of the playoffs? They didn't really have the depth. I really don't think that whatever one player Vegas would lose to Seattle would be a backbreaker to to, to, to Vegas. If you're going to say, well, it could be Flurry. Seattle wouldn't have taken Flurry if he was available. They have younger, cheaper options in net. I really can't see Mark andre Flurry being the guy that Seattle would take. So, but it's neither here nor there because they're exempt, right? Now, the minimums that they must draft out of the 30 players. They have to draft 14 forwards, nine defensemen, and three goaltenders. Now, you do the math, that's 26 players out of 30. So there's some leeway there. Look for them to probably draft 14 or 15 forwards, three goaltenders, but they may draft extra goaltenders and trade a couple out. My guess is they trade extra, or they draft extra defensemen. When Vegas came in, they drafted a ton of defensemen in the expansion draft with no, ex no, no expectation of keeping some of the guys they were drafting. And then they traded guys out. And they made some smart trades when they did so. So uh, we'll see whether or not Seattle follows that template. I'm thinking they probably do. Load up on defensemen and goaltenders. And then make your deals. Uh, forwards you can find in free agency. You might be able to get a defenseman or a goaltender that might get you back more in trade than extra forwards would. Uh, 20 of the players must be under contract for 2021-2022. 20, but remember, when that that protected list comes out and they know who's exposed, anybody who's exposed for expansion draft, they have rights to sit down and talk extension with them. And we'll come back to that. Now, when they draft their players, there ha there's a minimum of 60% of the salary cap. That's where it's going to be interesting. Does Ron Francis try to get to the minimum? Does he maybe go for middle, you know, about 80%? Uh, does does he just try to save as much space as possible in order to maybe take a dip into the free agent market? The thing is, he has access to those free agents for four days anyways. So we may very well see them easily hit that 60% mark, maybe even 100% if there's some really good UFAs that they're able to sit down and negotiate with. Um, no movement clauses, of course, must be protected. Now, teams have been asking, we'll find out who we, we see waiving those no movement clauses teams have been asking guys to waive um and and so again that information will come out later because minnesota said like bill Guerin said he would be talking to guys about waiving their no movement clauses players don't have to uh that's why they they got them baked into their contracts because they don't want to go anywhere so uh it would be on the player to say yes or say no and of course the last time around Dion Phaneuf said no and that caused some some upheaval and some upset in ottawa so we'll see whether or not there's players who say no to waiving the no, move, no movement clause this time around and what kind of havoc that might create. Like, for instance, coming back to Minnesota, if both Parisi and Suter waive their no movement clauses, things get a lot easier for Bill Guerin because those guys with their contracts, they're not going to get taken by Seattle and then you're able to protect two other players. But if they don't, then that creates a problem, right? Uh, first and second year pros are exempt. Now, what's thrown people off is that doesn't mean they have to have NHL experience. That means two years of pro experience. So if there's a player who's been playing in Bridgeport for two years, Utica for two years, if you've got a player who's been playing in, in Springfield for two years, they have to be protected or they are potentially going to go in the expansion draft. So I know for Vancouver, Cole Lind, Gadjevic, uh, these are two guys who have been talked about as maybe being the ones that 
Seattle ends up taking because the, the pickings from Vancouver are probably going to be slim, right? So it, it, it does mean that if they have two years of professional hockey experience, they are not exempt from the draft. Uh, Kiefer Bellows being an example of that in New York. He doesn't have two years of NHL experience. He hasn't played that many games in the NHL, but he's got two years of pro experience. So if Seattle decides to take him, they can. Now, uh, teams must expose players who are a minimum. So if you go to Cap Friendly, okay, you go through Cap Friendly, go through their 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 tool for for expansion. You'll see guys with green check marks. The guys with the green check marks meet these requirements. The guys without the green check marks don't. So two forwards have to be exposed by each team. Who, who have played 27 or more games this season. Now, originally it was uh, more games than that, but because of the shortened season, they dropped it down to 27. And, or, the players have to have played 54 games over the last two seasons. So, this means if you have a player who played 54 games last year and spent this entire season as a healthy scratch, he meets expansion draft requirements. Uh, you also have to expose one defenseman who meets that same criteria. 27 games played this year or 54 games played in the NHL over the last two years. So that has to be there. So there have been defensemen getting picked up and moved around. I know Madison Bowie was picked up by Vancouver and that's part of the reason why. Met the expansion draft requirement. So also you have to expose a goaltender who is under contract for 2021-2022 or... He's an RFA this offseason. So 2020-2021, season's done. He's an RFA at the end of that. So you have to expose a player who is one or the other. And we'll see how how that affects which goalies are, are available and, and what Seattle's able to pick from. But if you don't see a green check mark when you're going through that expansion draft tool, it doesn't mean that a guy's exempt. If you see like 14 games remaining, 20 games remaining, that just means... The players don't meet that expansion requirement, but it doesn't mean Seattle can't take him. So Seattle might look at a guy and go, well, he's only played six games at the NHL level over the last three years, but we like the player, so we're going to take him. So while he may not meet the GM's requirement for exposure, it does meet the requirement for Seattle to take him. Uh, this was just to make sure that teams weren't um, basically putting crap out there. This, this goes back to... Um, expansion drafts back in the mid late nineties, some of the players that they you'd see exposed, you'd be like, he's still playing hockey. When was the last time he played a game? Wait, who's exposed? Didn't he retire? So yeah, that it's, it's, it's to prevent looking at basically dogs breakfasts of exposed uh, lists, right? Now where things are going to be interesting too, and we'll see how many players this applies to, there is an exemption for players missing the previous 60 or more games. So we had a 56 game schedule this year. That'll be the entire season this year. And the last four games of last season who are ruled to have a career threatening injury. The NHL can investigate whether or not it is a potential career threatening injury, meaning that if you're going to get medical and get checked out. But as a Dallas fan, where we've seen uh, a, a lot of missed games by some, some veteran players, it'd be interesting to see whether or not any of their players could potentially get under that exemption where it would be yeah i know this guy's got potential career ending injury because they have some no movement clauses there as well so that'll be interesting to see uh how that works uh the protected lists of course have to be submitted by july 17th as i mentioned in the video the other day uh seattle can offer here's the reason too so i've seen people saying well why in the world would you worry about protecting ufa okay well if you're seattle you can offer an unrestricted free agent an eight-year deal. You can sit down with Dougie Hamilton and say, all right, we're offering you an eight-year deal. Dougie turns it down, goes to the market instead. The most you can offer him as a UFA is seven years. So what they can offer these guys before the expansion draft is an eight-year contract. Now that means, let's say, you know, Dougie Hamilton, again, is the example. They sign him eight years, $8 million a year, $64 million contract. He is then the expansion pick they take from Carolina. So they go up, they, they say, all right, and here's Dougie Hamilton, and here's the face of the franchise, our version of Marc-Andre Fleury, what he was for Vegas when Vegas came in, and everybody goes, wow, they, take, they took Hamilton and they signed him to a major deal. The one thing with that is, that's the kind of thing that will leak out beforehand. 
I I would think that if Seattle signs a few guys to some big contracts, that that'll leak out beforehand. But this this is one way that Ron Francis may make this team competitive right out of the gate. There's been the of course the Duncan Keith rumor that maybe he'd end up in Seattle because he wants to be near his son, right? And and if he wants to be near his son, that would mean that he has to go to the the the, the West. It'd be Vancouver, Seattle, Calgary, Edmonton, and latest reports are Seattle and Edmonton are the likely destinations with Edmonton being in the lead. But Seattle could, think about it, they could potentially have Duncan Keith sign a Dougie Hamilton and then bring in other defensemen as well through the expansion draft. You could have a really good defense core in Seattle immediately. And with the goaltenders that are going to be available, you could have a really good goaltending tandem right out of the gate. And again, they could sit down with Chris Drieger and go, here's our deal for you and sign him. And then what that does is it it goes to those 20 players who are under contract for 2021, 2022. So to just say, well, they're UFAs, so Seattle won't touch them. No, Seattle may not, but they may sit down, negotiate with them and make them not UFAs anymore and sign them to a deal. Um, we can assume that there are some players who are going to be exposed that have a handshake or a verbal deal with the general manager of the team that's leaving them exposed, that they will sign a contract once expansion's done. But the door's still there. Like, the door's still open. Ron Francis can still make a phone call and go, I, I understand you got an agreement, but can I talk to you? And and then, you know, he has the opportunity to sit down and, and make some sort of a deal. So it'll be interesting to see how this all works out uh, once, we, once we get to that date two weeks from today. So it's two weeks from today. Consider this your primer. I'm wearing my Seattle Thunderbirds uh, jersey for this, along with my my hat. I I still I still think that would have been a good good design for them to have out of the gate. But yes, uh, it is it is Canuck colors, and it would have been it would have been odd. Well, I mean it's old Hartford Whaler colors with the gray. This is the Hartford Whalers early '90 colors, but I still like it. All right, there you go. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. And again, I hope this clears up. If there's any confusion people have had over how this is going to work, hopefully this kind of clears things up. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.